This is the CC Radio Podcast. Show me that list again. Show me that list. Don't pick that horror. Baby, here's a rom-com. Counting down one, two, we ten. We should do. This list is ready to begin. Oh, 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 as long as we've got some dick jokes. We've got the audience right in our hands, Polly, you and me. We gotta be the luckiest dick, as you know that we're assholes. As long as we keep on listing, we can take any topic comes our way, asshole, week to week. So, my dear, we got each other sharing the soundboard and ball. <laughs> Welcome to the episode 223 of the Countdown Movie and TV Reviews Podcast. Today on the show, we're going to look at all the reasons we're ashamed of ourselves. My name is Wayne. <laughs> and my name is Paul. Welcome to the podcast we count down movies. And today, TV shows from 10 through 1. So you don't have to, because it's all in order of awesomeness. Yeah, that's right. TV show. That's why Paul picked that. Uh, the opener. The opener. The, the not often used opener. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about it myself. <sighs> <laughs> Maybe for the best, really. <laughs> Anyway, today, top 10 guilty TV pleasures as set us by top level patron, good friend of the show, Geordie Davidson. What up, G? Thank you so much, Geordie, for this topic. And we've gone away. We've made our list. Gotta say, this one was hard. Was it difficult for you? Really difficult. Was it difficult because there was too many choices, not enough choices? You weren't sure what you were, what parts of your uh, personality you were going to expose to the public this, today? <laughs> I didn't talk about that part. But no, yes. this is really... As, as I made this list... I dislike myself more and more with each choice. I said, oh, fuck. Was it, uh, you know what? Yeah. Because the thing is, it's got to be a shit show that you like. You know it's shit, but you like it anyway. So what's that say about you? Yeah. Yeah. To a, to a degree. Although this is, the, this is the reason I struggled. If I start watching a TV show when it's shit, I stop watching it. So it's very rare that I get through a number of episodes or, or <laughs> certainly seasons of a show if it's shit. But you sometimes you see shows, you see enough of shows that you know what it is, and you know you liked it for a while, but then it just became fucked. So, yeah, you're right. What did you like that was fucked anyway? Look, we'll get to it in due course. A couple of things, though, we should get through as mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, admin at the top of the show we do each week. Let's start with something, though, that's a little bit different. And this is with big thanks to Shannon Martin, who's Director of Communications at Podbean. Right. And Podbean, our host provider, for featuring us in their best shows of summer podcast oh how nice yeah so obviously it's summer in the states and they put a big blog, blog post up we featured ourselves and the epic film guys which is lovely nice so, you know, our sister slash brother show whatever in the u.s uh, he's the bomb both of us on there in the pop culture category so you can check that out in the actual app itself as well there's a list of uh, summer podcasts to listen to i shall do that thank you so much shannon and thank you so much podbean for that next thing the results from last week's vote <laughs> i week. had a look at this Ooh. yeah it wasn't pretty it was <laughs> not pretty I won, as you can tell from the... And but it was a comfortably. rectum raping. Yeah, it was 37 votes to me, 12 votes oh, to 12. Wayne. I didn't he, think I would crack He got the double figures. Double figures. Which is, <laughs> Wayne and I probably have a bit of a laugh about whether or not we're going to make it when yeah, one of us like, gets hammered. When it's a fucking landslide, <laughs> yeah. So very easy. So that makes me nine wins for this year, seven for you with one draw. Now, some of the comments as to how did this happen. Chris Uni said, uh, <laughs> Running Scared did not deserve the harassment and I, Paul, gave it. Wayne, misplacing the game is... Well, classic Wayne. <laughs> Fine for that. Uh, Adam Lure, new new patron of the show, said, uh, Paul, for his horror picks. Serious. Uh, Luke said, Luke Alexander said, I had two of his choices. Chris O'Neill said, sorry, Wayne, but being a biatch who shits himself at the sound of a balloon popping doesn't help when it comes to suspense and edge of your seat thrills. Better luck next time, pal. I can probably agree with that, too. <laughs> Grant Latham said, can Wayne actually still clench said rectum? <laughs> I think I saw that one and thought that was really good. <laughs> yeah, quite a few people laughed that one. Newest uh, patron to the show, Ant Juan, said, uh, Paul, for including The Sixth Sense, probably one of the most intense movies I'd seen to date at the time. That's a clever name, Ant Juan. Yeah. I just got it. J-U-A-N. Very good. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly, from Cy was our high-level, top-level patron to the show and a very good friend as well. Come on, Wayne, lift your game. You're getting your ass soundly kicked. You know mm -hmm. that I always vote for you, but at this rate, I'm going to have to go to the dark side and start voting for Paul. That's okay. You go ahead and vote for Paul because I'm not going to be, you know, cranky the whole day because I lost <laughs> or anything. I'm fine with it. <laughs> doesn't matter, Dwayne. Nope, it's he fine. He doesn't it's care. Fine. I mean, it's easy not to care when you lose. Who, who are you going to vote for? 
<laughs> are you going to vote for the person who puts his heart and soul in? Or the guy's like, I don't give a fuck. No, no, I'm, I Why put my heart, heart and soul in. I yes. <laughs> just don't care as much about winning. Welcome, Soundboard, to the show. Oh, of <laughs> Speaking of fucking not winning. <laughs> <laughs> Take it back. Yeah, suck it. Uh, and then lastly, we need to check in regarding the movie watching challenge. No, we don't, but you do. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Everybody wants to know <laughs> I'm sure how, how insane has it gotten. And a big shout out to the CC Radio Boys, uh, Comic Confidential, for <laughs> they did their show episode that dropped this week. They had a big sort of pull apart of what's going on in this movie watching challenge. Oh, God. <laughs> Go check that out if awesome. you haven't already because it's been out for a couple of days before this one drops. I am now on 488 films. Oh, my God. God, As we you've... progress towards 500, I really went hard this week, really hard, and might even have got it done. Nah, probably not. That would have been too much. But I was away the last couple of days and only watched one or two each day while he was driving. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Hendo Henderson from yep. the IMDb Journey podcast, 410. So he has unofficially sent me a message to say, "Well done, you've won," but I'm not there yet. Got 12 films to watch. Yeah, let's see how you know. So it gets. yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard to imagine he's going to watch 90 in the times and take me to watch 12, but. <laughs> they are the numbers, and of course, our first person to 500 after after me gets themselves a prize. That's right. Wayne, how are you going to design a coffee mug? Oh, you're doing that? I thought that was a joke. All right, yeah, cool. <laughs> you the one that said it. I was joking. All right, fine. <laughs> I'll work it out. You insignificant cunt, little fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit Okay Yeah yeah Look yeah. if it's not that I'll give you There'll like, be some merch Yeah I'll, you Get it'll some be... of my pubes or something I don't know Just <laughs> something we'll put, It'll be like a collector's item <laughs> Okay Maybe let your hair grow out a bit get, cut, That'd be even rarer <laughs> Cut one of those off Set them through Yeah it would take too long <laughs> <laughs> Alright so very much Next week will be the final Reporting on the movie watching challenge There will no <laughs> doubt be A lot of gloating so There'll be a lot of jizz in here man I'm fucking putting up scaffolding <laughs> There could be Fuck it <laughs> Well, that's it for all the preamble for the show. The admin stuff is aside. Let's get into it then. On the other side of this music cue, the top 10 guilty TV pleasures. The top 10 guilty pleasure TV shows. Okay, wasn't expecting it to go like that. All right, Paul and his damn soundboard. <laughs> That's the mixer, actually. I mean, the mixer, yeah. All right, so we've had a discussion about what this mean, list means to us. Yep. I have owned up to not having, well, really struggling, to be brutally honest with this list. So why don't I lead away with my number Good. 10? Is there anything Good. else you want to say? Or I just want to say that I know, just because I know there will be some comments about this. Oh, God. I know that after this list, you won't like me, and I don't like me either. If that makes any fucking difference, okay? <laughs> You'll go, he what? Because I'm fucking burying my soul with this shit. You'll see it from 10. That you go, oh, you dumb bitch. Like that. But I'm admitting the whole So lot. are you suggesting the listeners will think, you are a sad, strange little man. Yes, more like more so than they do now. If you can imagine such a mm, thing. I don't think anyone's going to be overly impressed with my list. Maybe for different reasons I than yours. I think it would be good to bury your soul here and uh, group hug it up. All right, let's go. All right, well, my number 10 is the newest show on my list Insofar as is the one I most recently watched. However, there is a newer show on the list, mm. but I haven't got around to the latest season yet because of the movie watching challenge. Okay. Right. And you might say, well, Paul, how have you had time to watch any TV in the last six months? That's exactly what I thought, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> as it turns out, this was a show my daughter got into and it became a bit of a daddy daughter watching experience, which is weird given what it the- is Ultimate Beastmaster. What the fuck is <laughs> Ultimate Beastmaster? <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> Are you shitting me? No. Like, what is it? What is it? A cartoon? No, it's on Netflix. It's a um, it's like one of those like American or sorry, Ninja Warrior shows where yeah. you have to climb through these oh, okay. massive obstacle <laughs> things, swing okay. from shit, climb up, you know, yeah, 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 you know, all that kind of like a and that, it's called the Beast. That's it. Work their way through the Beast. Oh, so it's like American Ninja Warrior kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I just said, but thank you. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Pay attention. To I know care. there's like a few of them, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. So this one, which I I've only seen the third season, which had eight or ten episodes. I can't remember, and it was a. It was featured as a you know America versus the world, so every nation had six or eight competitors, yeah, including Australia mm. and uh, United States, Brazil, Germany, Japan, Mexico, South Korea, Spain, France, Italy, China, India, United, uh, China. Some of those weren't in the se- third season, I should say, and Australia. Australia were just in the third season, so this season one, so this is Stallone hosted. Cool. What? Well, I didn't watch that one. I watched the third season where the Aussies were in it, 
And the Aussies did fucking well. That's all mm, I'll say. Really? Mm. Well, I'm quite impressed now because I didn't think you'd go this reality TV route. Well, so, it's one of two reality TV shows. Oh, oh this is going to get fucking nasty because I hate fucking reality it, TV. It, it, I guess it's reality TV. It's really it's yeah, a game, it's, it's it's a game a, show. Game show is a bit different. You're right. You're right. Yeah, so it's not really fair yeah, to call it really. reality TV. But it, my daughter got into it. It was good fun watching it with her. I no, know no. it's not good TV. With Danny Minogue it. and is Danny Minogue in it? Nick Cummings are the <laughs> are the Australian. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, oh, hosts, oh, okay, okay. Commentators, so they, yeah, 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 they have every country. And, yes, I get and then it the commentators. Oh, all... so it's like it's a knockout kind of shit. Yeah, very similar to that. <laughs> oh, kind of damn! Vibe. It's a knockout, very Australian show from <laughs> about thirty years ago. The Brits had it too. Did they? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, that's my number ten. It's very, not good, but it was entertaining. That's uh, that's a good. It's a window into your soul there. Mm. Uh, much like this one is for for me. Get ready, folks. My number ten is Saved by the Bell. Ooh. Oh yeah, Ooh. that's right. Okay, so listen, anyone who doesn't know what this thing is, and I know all the Americans do know. Back in like 1992 to 94, every Saturday morning, there used to be this block of TV in the morning, which showed various children's programming. And being the early 90s, there wasn't a lot of Australian content produced kids shows, so they used to play a lot of American ones. And Saved by the Bell is about a group of high school friends and their principal, and it's primarily focused on like, like it's a, it's a real cheap ass show. It's a cheap show. It has like two leads, and for some reason, it's really, really weird because the lead guy, Zach, is Mark Paul Gossamer is in it. And two other stars that actually are stars now, T- Tiffany Amber Theason and Elizabeth Berkeley from Showgirls. Stars. Yeah, I say stars with, with uh, air quotes, absolutely. <laughs> um, but Mark Paul Gossamer, he weirdly breaks the fourth wall all the time and really, really cheesily, cornily addresses the camera, telling you what the shit is going on, and then he goes back to the show. And it's really shit, but for some reason, I have seen a shitload of these episodes. And this wasn't back like now. It's like, where you can dial up a TV show. I had to be there on Saturday morning. So I don't know what kind of shit life I had if, when, <laughs> when after I graduated high school, but on Saturday morning, I was up and watching TV. So uh, what can I say? It's well, a piece of shit, but it does have an odd cult following. I, because yeah, it's so it, shit. it absolutely does. And I have a question for you. Then. Okay, go on. Uh, do you, are, are you aware of uh, the... Screech, is that his name? Yeah, Dustin Diamond. Yeah, Dustin name. Diamond. So have you heard the stories about him? Oh, well, he wrote a tell-all book or some, of some sort about how people were hooking up on the show and this sort of shit. A little bit like a Brady Bunch type of tell-all book. Um, I think he's actually trying to produce a movie of it. <laughs> well, more than that, he got, a, he got arrested for stabbing some dude all Did the way he? and went to jail. Really? Yeah. Screech? Yep. Holy shit. Like gangster and shit. That guy was fucked as well. Like, he was 11 years old when he was on the show, and they didn't know he was 11 years old. What? Yeah. All these kids are like 14 and 15, and he's 11, and he's on the show. What the hell? So, I don't know, man. It's all messed up and whacked up, but I actually oddly remember it fondly, and I know I have a problem. There you go. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's a piece of shit. I've got a couple of old school ones like that coming up on my list as well, which people are going to be like, whoa. I know, and that's why it's, that's why this is fun. So, let's hear yours. What's your number well, nine? Well, guilty pleasures. We're not acknowledging these are good shows. We're exactly. saying... They are ple- things that we take pleasure from, <laughs> guiltily. Totally. All right, my number nine is, well, arguably the best show on my list. Interesting. So if I had to present a show which technically it's well made, mm. it's it's intriguingly put together in a different way, this is probably the best of the lot. But you can tell me why you think it's shit, though. Right? Well, I'm really putting this on there because everyone else seems to think this is shit, and I don't understand why. Let's hear it. It's from the makers of Z Nation, which... That's Guilty Pleasure TV. No idea where that is going. <laughs> which is a really sort of Some sci-fi channel zombie-ish. version of The Walking Dead. Oh, okay. There it is. Right. But it's played for laughs and, and whatever else. Whether or not it's the creators behind that show or not, I'm not sure, to be brutally honest. But it, they meant to make a prologue TV show about how Z Nation started. And yeah. It was going to be called Black Summer. But then that changed the tone and made it really deadly serious. No pun intended. And it came out this year on Netflix in April. What's it called? It's called Black Summer. Black Summer. Yeah, eight episodes. They're all <laughs> 40 minutes to only 20 minutes long. It's over in a flash. And it was I really dug it. What? But yeah, all the reviews are like, yeah, oh, you can skip it. Shit, fucking whatever. I can't, I've but. never heard of this before. Wow, this is yeah. some obscure shit, man. And the people think it's shit because it's not scary, not zombie-ish, not funny, uh, not what. What is it you like? Well, about? I like the fact that it was so unpredictable. That they basically, the first episode is showing five or six different characters' point of views. And it like, yeah. starts with whatever hurt the name is uh, Rose. Bam. And yeah. the only recognizable actor is Jamie King. Oh, yeah. Is, oh, is, she is Rose. Oh, yeah. And the next one is like Julius and Martha and whatever else. And yeah. By the end of that first episode, one of them hasn't made it. Okay. So they, they off people. Oh, this is why you like Game it. Game of Thrones regularity, yeah, yeah, yeah. but unpredictably and whatever else. Yeah, this 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 TV show is the um is the TV show version of VHS show uh, tapes that Paul used to rent from like back blockbuster <laughs> and shit, where they're like, no one's gonna fucking rent this, but Paul does. 
<laughs> interesting, interesting that you have yeah. a such an obscure one, or maybe it's not obscure to you people out there, but I've never heard of it. So there you are. Yeah, I know that Netflix and Swill Boys didn't like it very much at all. So okay. well, at least Dan didn't. Whereas I thought it was pretty damn good. All right. Once again, the clash happens. Good. Mm. My number nine is one of those trashy ass VH1 type shows, <laughs> right? And you're gonna. What? I don't know how you'll feel about this, or even if you know about it. It's called Your Mama. <laughs> Never heard. Okay, of it. well, Other than the fact that it's the start of a joke, which is why I suspect is the reason you watched it in the oh, first place. Oh, dude! All right, so check it out. First of all, it's hosted by Fez from that '70s show. His name is Wilmer Vandorama. Oh yeah, right. Oh, is that '70s show is that on your list? No, because it's a brilliant show. It's Doesn't not qualify? guilty. No, now I'll tell you. How, I can tell you a whole episode about how good that show is. Anyway, um, please don't. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now, your mama is uh, basically it ran from like. April 2006 to maybe 2007. It went for like two years, okay? But it's about... The way it works is that it's a game show. There's two players, usually filmed in a parking lot or on a basketball court or near a beach or somewhere, whatever. And each contestant has a crew of people around them. And typically the two contestants are from different areas within, I guess, LA, like Compton versus Eagle Rock or whatever. And they insult each other's mothers, right? And every time they do it, the crowd around them goes apeshit. Like, oh, shit! You know? <laughs> what? No! <laughs> Dude, here's what it is, right? <laughs> That's hilarious. I cannot believe this. Dude, it's hilarious, man. They're coming up. He remember this. They have to write their own your mama jokes. So you could go with like I think one of them was saying like just like um your mama's so fat when God said let there be light, they had to move the bitch out of the way. <laughs> or or <laughs> No, wait, it was all shit like they have to come up with like your mama's teeth so yellow I can't believe it's not butter and all this kind of shit. One guy said, uh, "I don't want to burn down on you too bad, but the last time I fucked your mom, she gave me these." And he turns around and he throws live crabs onto the <laughs> onto the floor. <laughs> it's really it's fucking funny. <laughs> I can't believe you're laughing at this. Dude, it's class. Cause it, it, I mean, no, each, it's not. Class. It's not class. It's not class. <laughs> Sorry, it's not class. But after each one, everyone's like, "Oh shit!" And it becomes like that. And then the whole thing, man. <laughs> so it's not this like this is some um, civilized exchange. It's like boom, oh, boom, ah. So it's it's fucking great. Right. If you all have seen it, I'm telling you, this shit gets funny. It gets real funny. And you you talking there, you reminded me of a show which I cannot believe didn't make my list. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to change my list up on the fly. Oh, all right. All right. So I'm kicking out what was number eight. I'll just honorable mention Battle of the Planets. Oh, fucking G Force. Yeah. Yeah, that's the. Sh- Wait a minute. I guess you can't say it's good. No. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> was it uh, Bebop, Keebop, Keop? Keop, Keop. He was a little name. motherfucker. Yeah, so, uh, Tell everyone what it's about. <laughs> so basically, it's five friends. It's an anime show. Anime, but like fucking. repurposed for yeah, American. Japanese. Voices, kind of, yeah, and that's it. And it's really. I mean, it was great when I was like eight. There, I think there's five teenagers and one's a chick. Yeah. So it's a bit like Star. Um, what's he called? Um, fucking, Star Blazers. No, that fucking. What's that more from Power Rangers oh, shit? Mate, mate, yeah. But they're I, all, they have like <laughs> phoenix and bird motifs to their outfits and yep. they jump out of a plane and they fucking skydive. It was cool back in the day. Back in the day. But yes, I've seen snatches of it since and it ain't so cool. <laughs> I bet you were shit, eh? Yeah. I bet you would be shit. Because of, oh, you'd be horrible. Anyway, yeah. that was all cool. All right, so that wasn't my number eight. So instead, my number eight, this is not the one I'm, I'm shuffling in higher up. My number eight is Heroes. Oh. Actually, I'm a little bit on board with you on this one. Mm. This is one of the few shows I've seen every single. No, you frame saw it all. I, I was out. I, you sh- good. I, I I'm out. bad that I. I and I certainly didn't watch the rebooted one, which. Oh fuck Tim that! Craig I didn't go anywhere near that. Tried to do two years ago, three years ago, whatever That's it was, right. That's and right. we briefly considered watching for the show. Then the reviews rolled out. We're like, nope, fuck no, that no, no, shit. That would be shit. But the original Heroes, the first season, I will stand by as excellent. Television. I agree. That is awesome. By the way, everyone, Heroes, please. It's about like basically ordering people who develop oh, superhero it's powers. Basically, it's basically X Men. Yeah, basically X Men. Put on to a TV budget. Yes. And given completely different powers than what the X-Men have, so mm-hmm. they're not recognizable. And kind of everyday people developing powers, like you said, rather than being born with them, they kind of just suddenly come on. Yes. Seems to As be the case. As though there was some mutation. Yeah, it is totally X-Men. Yeah, the cheerleader can't die. Yep. Then it, they wrote themselves into a corner and let this be a lesson to all budding filmmakers out there. You cannot put time travel in your TV show slash movie and think it doesn't change anything. They wrote themselves to such horrendous was, corners in that show. It had absolutely p- come to shit. Even the second season was bullshit. Well, the end of the first season was when Hero Time traveled back to feudal Japan from memory. Yeah. And that's where it all went wrong. That, and then, exactly. And then they tried to, oh, it was so shit. But yeah. I, the thing is, I was, I don't know why. And but Sila died 73 times and always came back. That's and right. Fucking ridiculous. This would never happen now. But I, for some reason, stuck with it because I guess there was nothing else to watch. And then I watched everything. I thought, this is really shit. You were slavishly loyal to that I show. don't know why. And as I was watching it, I knew it was shit. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I don't know where, what, what, I don't know where I went this wrong. That's why it's low on my list because 
it's basically it's a crappy version of X Men. It is made Look, on a bit of a budget, and then it wrote itself to such terrible corners that I watched. I hate watched the second season, and I think I was out early in the third season when Sila came back for the seventy third time. Yeah. That's when I'm fucking done. And I think it was four seasons for I got canned. I think you saw every single one. I did, and you know what? The thing about it was that that made it cool was that it was like X Men, but no one had a costume. So it became like these normal people who turned into actual heroes, but they kind of didn't know, and villains as well. So that's what made it cool, and then it just jumped the shark immediately. Yeah, so. exactly. All right, so that's my eight heroes. Okay, my number eight is far more embarrassing. It's two and a half, man. I told you I don't oh like myself. Oh, my God. I told you I don't like myself. So huh, two and a half, man, is about um, <laughs> Charlie Sheen who is a well-to-do bachelor that writes commercial jingles for a living and basically he has the best oh, life any man, man could have. He, he lives in Malibu. He's got this kind of, man's kind of mansion kind of place. His, his brother comes to live with him and his son. And, the, and that after that, hilarity ensues. Now, I don't know how to tell you this, but I quite like Charlie Sheen. I don't give a shit. I liked him all through his Navy SEALs years. I liked him when he was doing a bunch of shit. When he's You've a little got some bit tiger older. blood in you, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Just want to be winning, Paul. Um, <laughs> No, I don't mind. I actually find him in this show. I actually find the humor. I'm laughing a lot. I'm sitting there going, <laughs> sure, it's stupid. Sure, it's one note. And sure, it's a three camera sitcom. But I can't, I can't like deny that I laugh at this shit. And also, I think most of the lines are actually pretty funny. I'm sorry, they are. What up? So, yes, it's bullshit. But yes, I always laugh. Did you see the Megan Fox episode, Paul? No, I did not. Okay. Well, you that's all I'm going to stand by the fact that it's still funny. Uh, did yeah, that, I do. If you watch, yeah. if you it's on, happened to be on, you'd watch yeah, it now. Yeah. Megan Fox one was on. I'd laugh at not it. Not Megan Fox, but anyone. Oh, look, I didn't like it when Ashton Kutcher came on. Right, but I will so say that's that, where you're drawing the line at the Kutch. Well, I will say that the episode where they introduced him after all that trouble with Charlie Sheen was actually handled very well. How they introduced him, that's worth what watching. But I don't really watch it after that. It's the, all the Charlie Sheen stuff that I watched. Right. So you know. So long story short, Wayne is Charlie Sheen fan, <laughs> and everything else is shit around that show. <laughs> Um, no, John Cryer, the, infa- the famous Teddy Z, that guy, he's, he's, he's pretty good too. Uh, and the kid I hate. I don't like the kid. So there you go. <laughs> but I never like the kid, so what do you want? <laughs> All right. So that was your eight as well. Am I correct in saying that? I was indeed. All right. My number seven is the one which I think everybody in the Facebook community knew I was going to pick. The reason it's not any higher is because I legitimately think this is a good show. I think it's very well produced. I think it's exceptionally well made for what it is. Then it's not a guilty pleasure. But everyone else who doesn't watch this show thinks it's absolute mm, rubbish. Okay, let's let's hear it. Let's hear it. And I and I also acknowledge it's a reality TV show. Hence, okay, uh, on that basis, I could tell you it automatically. Yes, right. I'm talking about Survivor. Oh fucking a, fucking a, fucking. So a. You, you know what? That's a, it, of course. By the way, Paul is the most fucking loyal Survivor fan. He's watched all eight hundred thousand episodes. Yeah, I haven't watched them all. There's a couple of seasons I think I missed along the way because I watched the very you first the one entire season. back in the day. I didn't. I've not watched this the whole way through. I got back into it about ten years ago and oh, I watched yeah. every season since and managed to find a few seasons magically. I did that with Lost and watched a few of those as well. Yep. But I think there's two or three seasons I haven't seen. But I think we're season thirty four. And by the way, the Australian version this is fucking garbage <laughs> and it's it not guilty pleasure TV. It's just fucking shit. Yes. But uh, the original Survivor, yeah. Uh, what well, we just have season fucking ridiculous. I don't know what it was. 38th. Uh, 38 seasons? Has that ever happened in anything? No, that was, that was, a, oh, that's filming dates. Yeah. Okay. So we just said season 38. So season 39 is coming. 39? So this is only for 40 do, years. They do, no, no, they're Almost. two seasons a year. Oh, yeah, they still do, 20 years. They Almost. do one in sort of kicks off in October and it runs to the end of the year. And then they kick off another one in sort of February, March and it runs through to May. Dear God, if you could articulate why this thing is still persists, because it's basically done what no other show has done. Yeah, I guess it hasn't. Even Cheers well, only lost I guess other shows have No, uh, the only thing that are comparable, like The Simpsons, is about Simpsons, the same length. Yeah, yeah, Simpsons also. In fact, it's double as long, but it's one season a year. Yeah. Some of the uh, daytime soaps have lasted longer, obviously. Oh, as well. that's a bit different, though. That's They're all like guilty pleasure. I mean, if anyone watches that shit. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah. But uh, this one... They do keep reinventing. They keep adding different rules and the like, and keep it fresh, which is which is smart. It's really, really successful. But I think it's Probst. Jeff Probst, the host, is is a very relatable guy. He's he's the perfect blend of critical of people who aren't doing it, who aren't making enough of an effort, and really supportive of those That's who are and are falling over. He must be making a fortune. Oh, he would be on multi billions and billions of yeah, boatload yeah, man. He's he's done exceptionally well for himself. Uh, and I just think it's it strikes a nice tone. They they generally pick. A good cast every season as well, where some people are likable, some aren't, and you, you get to have your heroes and your villains every year. You know, you're not the only one to sing this song. There are other people that I that I respect 
who also <laughs> watch this show. Wait, so other people that you respect, unlike this person. No, no, I, th- I think I, th- I was thinking about which way to go with that, but I also I, I, thought I heard the pause. I also respect you. I thought, no, that'd be funny. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a thing, and it's a lot of people that you don't think would watch this type of stuff do. So I this is on board and very yeah, fair a, enough. It's a real thing. My fiance and I watch together, and we, we both dig it. So it's oh, so nice. it's a couple show. Oh, in fact, last season my daughter got into it too, so she started watching it and actually following along. <laughs> oh shit! So now it's a family show. Oh my so, god! I hope yeah. it never stops. Okay. Yeah, well, it's coming back again, so we're really happy about that. Nice. My daughter was getting into it too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, my number seven people is a show called Burn Notice. <laughs> yeah, I saw someone say that in the list, and I thought, yeah, but I, then I went, no, nah, I didn't like it that much. I was, I was hate watching is too strong, but I was kind of just watching it because I'd started. Absolutely. Because it got so same same well, and let, so boring. Let's not forget Bruce Campbell's in this. Yes, that helps. Okay, helped. so that helps a lot, all right? But now, everyone, Burn Notice is a story about Michael Weston, who is burned. He's a, he's a spy, but someone burned him because someone put a burn notice out on him. That basically means, fuck you, you're excommunicated from the spy world and all yeah. the agencies, right? So he's stuck in Miami. You are persona non gratis. Exactly. And... That's the, the, the hook of the show, the first season anyway, is he's doing little week-to-week mysteries with the overall through line to find, being, out, to find out who, who burned, burned him. him. Yeah. Right. I know. <laughs> that, that, that lasts a whole long time. Now, like I said, he's in Miami, and I believe that is the reason the show is pleasant to watch. It's really sunny and nice and shot with a very vibrant filter. So I like that. <laughs> I, that's you know, It just makes me happy. I'm fine. I get that. But what is shit about the show is, apart from what you just said, where it literally runs around in circles... The whole thing is, the conceit of the show is, every different type of possible spy espionage type situation turns up, and every single time, Michael Weston is an automatic expert on it. It's like, it could be like a bomb threat, or a hostage negotiation, or an arms deal, or some shit, and every single time, he's like, starts with, the thing about a hostage negotiation, the thing about disarming <laughs> a bomb is, you know, all this sort of shit, he's just an expert. Is it Jeffrey Donovan, is that his name? Yeah, that's right. And, and he, he, he plays it so very, his voice is very deadpan. He is, he's playing... <laughs> It's odd. I wouldn't have picked him to be this guy, but he's got that sort of funny face where it kind of works. And the chick in it is Gabrielle Anwar, who was scent a, of a woman. Scent of a woman, right? Only she's. I, I gotta say, she's. A, it's, it's a little rough these days. Um, but like, <laughs> no, no. I mean, like, she's still. Harsh, go- tough, she's rough, still very pretty and stuff like that. But she starts with an Irish accent, and then it just becomes American. That's right. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a laugh. So um, yeah, quality I don't know. show, quality show, and of course Bruce Campbell. So yeah, I liked all that shit, and it's one of those things where you, it's good to have on. Like you will pay attention to it as much as you want to, and you don't care if you missed. Did stuff. they end up answering who burned him? I don't know. I stopped watching. Okay, okay. <laughs> Can anyone tell us? <laughs> let us? Let us know how. I mean, we could just do a web search. We ourselves. could, but we're not going to do that. So <laughs> if anyone wants to tell us, all right, moving right along then, on to my number. What's that? Six. Uh, yes. A f- TV show which lasted one season. Oh, fantastic. And one season only. And i got to be honest, the only reason I dug this show is because what? there's some hot looking chicks in it. <laughs> now it's all coming out, people. <laughs> okay. Now shit goes down. Yeah, you are right. I'm about to reveal something about myself here. Please. Um, it's called Kevin Hill. What the fuck is Kevin Hill? Kevin Hill aired on UPN. Do you remember that? UPN yeah, was I mean, an old UPN's, show which uh, became... Station? What's uh what what did what's what arrow and all that shit's on now? Oh CW. Yeah, so UPN became CW. That's right, Buffy was on UPN. That's right. She'll move there after. Move there, yeah. Uh, Fox got rid of it. This so stars Tay Diggs as the titular Tay Kevin Hill. Diggs, and it's a legal drama, right? Oh, and basically he's really he's his smooth. He's his, you know Tay Diggs. Tay Diggs. Tay Diggs. He's, Diggs, a, Diggs, he's an right. awesomely handsome. Man Absolutely. Who everybody would want a piece of. I want a piece of him. Yeah. Oh, who doesn't? Right. And he basically. Shit goes down in the first episode or two, and he has to join a the only law, law firm because he used to be high flyer who will take him, which uh-huh. is this law firm of women. Oh, it's great! So I it's, love it so far. Go it's, ahead. It's chicks dressed in suits, which I like. Who doesn't like that? Yep. Everyone likes flexing that. their muscles in court. And who doesn't like that? Teaching him lessons uh, whilst he's good at his job. Teach he's, me, he's, bitch. He's a bit of a shit house bloke as of a course, person, of course, because he's a man. Yeah. In a world, yep, little women, and so they're all sort of. That's how the whole show goes. Um, I'm really one of the women. Intrigued, I'm intrigued. Christina Hendricks. Oh my god! Why did you just lead with that? <laughs> oh god! Yeah, that's fantastic. So, What's it called? Kevin Hill. Kevin Hill. <laughs> Twenty-two episodes got canned. <laughs> <laughs> It came right at the time that David E. Kelly, sort yes, of yes, yes, Ali McBeals and well, Boston Legal. Tay Dig was in Ali McBeal. Okay, yeah. so he's probably the same character. <laughs> it may even be. He I don't be know because Boston Legal is the same universe as Ali McBeal. It wouldn't surprise me. And the practice playing. cracker. Yeah, all that shit. It's, so it's it was in that heyday fifteen years ago, and it obviously didn't take oh, off. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Uh, Christina Hendricks. So there you go. Okay, fantastic. Uh, my number six, everyone, is Glee. 
Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, everyone. Let's, the gloves are off now. What? All right. what? 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 Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, you. You can. You, I, I can't defend it. So it's an odd situation. I'm on. This is I'm, low. I'm gonna tell you. This all should about. be your auto one. No, 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 one. no, no. You'll see what the one is. You'll know <laughs> what it is too. This focuses on a high school choir, also known as a glee club, in a fictional high school in like Ohio. Uh, and basically, it's this um, this guy, this teacher, takes over the glee club after the former teacher departs, and he he's trying to restore the glee club to its former glory while also trying to pork another teacher called Emma Pillsbury. Now, the show it is, sounds awesome. It's it's <laughs> it's kids breaking into song. All right, it's kids breaking into song. I know, I know you're out. Which is why they're very I know you're out. I know it's bad because it's corny and essentially just that. But and the songs are produced like it's just they'll have the most wafer thin like premise for starting a song. Like, well, let's just say boo, and this guy just starts singing, right? But (laughs) no, not scatting, doing singing, right? It's a whole thing. It's a production, right? But I love the music from it because I like ironic covers and shit like that okay so i actually have heaps of songs from glee on my ipod right now no no and i prefer those (laughs) versions to the original versions of those songs let me tell you look up teenage dream by the glee soundtrack absolutely it's better than the Katy perry version i'm just saying why is refusing to buy (laughs) (laughs) fuck you i'm gonna go on yeah fuck you because your shitty soundboard is just the (laughs) it's like a comedy boner killer um so yes, I, I I adore the the music from Glee, and by extension, I don't mind watching the show either. You are right. There is no way that you liking Glee so much could be anything other than hilarious. So. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. I'm saying. I wonder how many of you out there are like me. <laughs> what are they, what are they, what are Glee fans called? Is there a name for them? I yeah. don't know. Uh, I guess it would. I don't know. Let's look it up. Gleekers, Gleekies. I would call Gleeks. I'd say Gleeks. Hang on. All right, Wayne's gonna look this up now while I vamp. What a list, hey? What a list so Fantastic far. Fantastic vamping, I think you'll agree there's some terrible Stop. choices on Gleeks! It is called Gleeks. Gleeks, okay? What's up, man? <laughs> Yo, VIP. All right, well, moving into the top half of the list then. <laughs> I obviously can't follow that up, so I'm really not going to try too hard, except to say this is a classic which doth not stand the test of time, and if you want any proof as to whether I'm telling the truth or not, then you need only look at the movie which was made of this, which is a piece of shit. Uh-oh. I'm talking about The A-Team. <laughs> Full disclosure, half the reason I picked this is because now I can run with the music. Oh, good. (laughs) Feel free. Uh, 1983 to 1987, former members of a fictitious United States Army Special Forces unit, they court-martialed for a crime they They did not commit. They escaped from military prison and while still on the run, work as soldiers of fortunes. What does the bit go? When you're in trouble, but you're alone, you made this If you can find them, you can hire the AT. (laughs) 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 <laughs> I'm glad we all do it the second bar. That's good. Starring George Papad, Dirk Benedict, Dwight Schultz, and Mr. T. I fucking loved the A Team when I was a kid, man. I loved it. I liked M16s as a result. Five seasons of the. Yeah, I'm saying it was great when you were a kid. So cool. Like, no, you wouldn't question anything. Absolutely not. And no one ever died in that show. And we all loved it when a plan came together. Oh, dude. <laughs> I wanted to be George Papad. When I had hair, I thought about trying to dye it green. <laughs> Nine year old. <laughs> yeah, and fucking smoke cigars and wear overcoats. It was the shit. And yes, it was turd, but you know what? I, I, my memory of it is that it, in the 80s, that was one of the finest shows on TV. Stephen J. Cannell was a god. He just knew all that shit. Mm. And I, yeah, but, and you look at it now, obviously it's Bullsack. Yeah. But it was great. But if it, look, I'm not going to say if it comes on, I'll stop and watch it because I haven't seen it come on in so long. <laughs> but I have such fond memories, but I know it was terrible. I know the whole premise was terrible. Absolutely. I know all the ridiculousness of it. And then they brought it all to the screen, or Joe Carnahan did in the feature film, and they updated it for 2013 you know what? I, or whatever. I rewatched it. I rewatched the, the 18 film. The tank falling out of the, the sky. The tank thing, <laughs> it actually, if you kind of know it's going to be shit, it's a lot better. If you know it's supposed to be shit, it's a lot better. I don't know. We was, I don't know what we were looking for. It's, this show, like, MacGyver's a spiritual sequel where you put. Them in a ridiculous yeah. situation, can't possibly get out of, and they just pull out welding torches and yeah, whatever. Yeah. Else, or for some reason, build a move. tank out exactly. of a car and exactly. drive through fifty dudes. Firing By the way, I loved them. that they always managed to get locked up where there's also a, a fully fixed workshop. Yep, like it's just, it's like, oh my god, look at these lathes and shit. <laughs> terrible, no, terrible I, show, but a lot of fun. Uh, you know what show was like that for me? Night Rider. Yes, that was because totally time, could be on this list. Oh, it could, and you know what? Back then, David Hasselhoff would wear a leather jacket with nothing underneath. 
<laughs> he would. He, he just had to zip down so it was a bit of hairy chest. I'm like, you heard that right, everyone. Who does that? Wayne went straight to the wardrobe. <laughs> To, to just I remember even book. back then going, he's wearing no t-shirt. Anyway, uh, all right, ma'am. That's my five. My number five is, of course, I don't know if you want to play a music cue here, but you may want to. <clears throat> Dawson's Creek. <laughs> I don't want to fucking wait. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that one, so I'm not joining him. <laughs> Dawson's Creek, everyone, is a show about hyper-articulate, wise beyond their yearns, teens char- teen characters in, like, Wilmington or a creek somewhere. And... Um, <laughs> It, the, at the time, high school shows had become a phenomena in the past, but no of this, none of the series pandered to teens the way Dawson's Creek did. I watched it around like it was it was like it was late a, a late nineties, early aughts, right? That's how it went to. And I used to go to someone's house and watch it with a bunch of friends. That's how nasty that was. You remember who? It was like Richard and fucking Jenny and fucking all them people. Uh, I'm and more ashamed at them than I am of, of uh, you. I, I think, well, at this stage, my fucking, my, my cock's out. Like, you know, <laughs> you know about me, all right? Um, but I, I adored the movie, the show, and I remember things about it. Yes, I was very in love with a character on it. Her name was Andy, uh, played by Meredith Monroe, who has since gone on to be a bit part player in one Steven Spielberg movie. Um, but you know, it's, uh, yeah, uh, she's also on a TV show for a while, but that got canceled. So, um, but the show itself, I, uh, it spoke to me and that's why when Smallville came along, it was like Dawson's Creek, only the Dawson was Superman and it was the perfect show. And I like that one. So it's not on here. Okay. So, <laughs> Dawson's Creek. Any, any fans out there? Anyone? Anyone? Oh, yeah, Come a on. couple of people picked it. Oh yeah. Yeah. The Creek, the big left the Creek. It was the show. I think Billy from We Watched the Thing picked oh, yeah. Dawson's Creek. So, and we called it Dawson's Crack. We did. We call it the crack. The crack. I never watched. Never saw an entire episode in my entire. You're life. kidding? No, you don't know what you're missing. Well, you maybe. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going back to my oldest and most classic choice here: British comedy at its not finest. Oh. But exactly what, you know, seven, eight, nine year old me thought was fucking hilarious. Holy shit! It was a wonderful lead into Doctor Who, and of course, talking about the goodies. Oh God. Goody, goody, goody yum, yum. yum. <laughs> do all the theme songs here. Wait a minute. So the goodies. Yes, I remember this. Um, I of course I do. It was, it was part of our, our childhood. I bet, I bet the American folks are scratching their heads right now. Yeah. So now. how how do I describe the goodies? Uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, there are a trio of British comedians: Tim Brooke Taylor, Graham Gardner, and Bill Oddy. And they did this show through the seventies and early eighties. I'm just trying to find how many seasons of this damn thing there were. You know what? I bet it was like because it was the ABC or BBC. Whoa. Twelve years this thing went for. How many shows Holy per episode? How many shit. shows per season? Sixty-seven half-hour episodes through twelve years. So I guess they did five or six a year only. Yeah, that's that's British TV. Pretty pretty standard for British, and they did a couple of forty-five minute TV specials. Now in Australia, it was pretty popular, and it ran at a six pm time slot. It like really I was. Said, we we all we into all Doctor it. Who at six thirty, which became sort of that hour of my of my night yeah, where the yes. TV went to myself. It had to be cut, though. I'm now reading. What? What do you mean? To be shown at 6 p.m., they had to cut parts of the 25 minute episode. Did they? Because it was too rude. Too rude and racy. Is yeah. there an uncut goodies episode somewhere? I guess there must be. Holy shit! I must find them. Yeah. I'll probably be disappointed if I see it again. But uh, I think it did. Uh, they did re air it in <laughs> ABC2 re aired it like nine years ago. It ran at 8 p.m. They could run all the episodes, didn't have to be cut. Oh anymore. my god, so they are around. Yeah. Oh my, well, so that's... the goodies, it's three British comedians. They were all, I guess, late. Late twenties, early thirties, yeah. and sort of that maybe mid thirties age range, and they were just get into ridiculous fucking adventures. That's right. They all lived together. There was yeah. like you know, it was just stupid shit. But really, it was... like one was a episode about uh, kitten which grows super size, like yes. King Kong and there destroys London. The Kremlin, and... yeah, exactly. Yeah, kitten Kong, that one was called. And there, then was there was weird shit. Another one where they got walled up inside a inside. <laughs> they got concrete got poured outside their building. They couldn't That's get right. out. Yeah, and they yeah. just Aged and and were old men and died. Yeah, and that was the, it. It was and the next weird. episode start again. It was That's just right. that level of sort of comedy. Totally, and I'd say in tone it is similar to sort of Benny Hill in places, like yes. in terms of like that. That's the kind of thing it was. But this is I haven't thought about this for a while. It used to always be the young ones that people like went ape shit about the ape that Ben had been. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. You're right. And, but then they also were musicians and they did their own songs. That's right. So they had every, not every episode, but I think quite a few of the episodes feature a song from from them. Bill Oddie used to sing a lot. I think they all sang, but maybe Bill Oddie's yeah, the, yeah, the he's main. Yeah, kept on going. Yeah. So there you go. So that's the kind of show. The it was. goodies. I'm interested in anyone's interested. Terrible, in like, terrible. No that? one mentioned it at all. I just, I think my no, memory, because it's a real, it's a real old, a deep cut, deep cut, big deep yep. cut. Okay, well, mine is not. My number four is not such a deep cut. It is. How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, now, my only question about this is, is it bad? Yes, let me tell you why it's bad, right, everyone. Right. 
The series follows the main character, Ted Mosby, and his group of friends in New York. And as a framing device, Ted, in the year 2030, recounts his to his son and daughter the events that led him to meet their mother. And they just obviously flash back completely to now when you know all their friends do their shit. Now, the reason it is crap is that there's only one character worth watching in this show. The other ones are shit. Ted. <sighs> Ted, 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 Ted is, is a, a bitch. I will agree. Ted is the Ted worst Ted is a character. total bitch, right? Uh, you want to go down. Marshall is probably the he's next. Fine. He's fine. But Billy's the, fine. Okay. The, the problem with the show is that it is written for schlock, man. Robin Shabotsky is pretty good. She's she's great. She doesn't make a great Maria Hill, but she's great. Yes. Um, and of course, Neil Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick Harris is the only reason to watch this As show. Barney. Okay. Because he's, he's Barney and he makes all the gags. I laugh pretty much every time he's on screen. But the problem that I have with the show is that as much as I enjoy the gags that do land, and they're reasonably recent, like uh, frequent, I mean, but it always goes into this, and here's the lesson from this episode, and here's the fuck, and it becomes schlocky. I hate it. I hate that part of it. That's the formula for those kinds of shows. No, there's like Seinfeld has an actual formula which says no lessons that was written in the brief, right? And that is a fucking comedy show. Just make me laugh. I don't need to learn shit because I'm smarter than you. So... It's that kind of shit that makes it crap. Which they then ultimately paid off in Seinfeld by having them all locked away in the last episode. Yes. All great so. TV. So, you know, you'll never see Seinfeld near this list. But uh, that move, that show, if it weren't for Barney, it seriously would not have run so long. It was just crap. But it certainly Barney, ended terribly. Ah, uh, I didn't care. Spoilers for it. No, I won't sell anything. No. But yeah. The, but... Making Barney just foul, but I think it was revolutionary in the way some of the things they did on that show, like like having a three line of a joke, like the slap bet, run for seasons afterwards. Agreed, is that, really clever. No, there are absolutely reasons why I've watched every fucking frame of the mm. show because you know it's a good thing to have on. I think uh, not that I want to come across like a big defender of How I Met Your Mother. I think it's a it's an incredibly flawed show, but I'm surprised it's a guilty pleasure. It's because I don't. There's another show which could well be a guilty pleasure, which just finished, and I wonder if it's still coming. Hmm. I don't. I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but it well, wouldn't surprise me. I will me. mention it at the end if you right. haven't. Okay. Right. I got to try and remember that. All right. Okay. My number three then is a show which is still fucking going to this day. Really? But I gave up at least seven years ago. I'm talking about Supernatural. Oh my god! Wait. So when did you give up? All uh, right. Season seven. I season season eight. I can't remember. And how many seasons now? Fifteen. Fuck. Yeah. Did you know that this? You go on, please. It was originally written. It was written by a guy named Eric Kripke. And he envisioned this show to be five seasons. And if you watch the first five seasons of this show, there's a point where it should have ended right there at the end of season five. It would have been a perfect five season show. People would have praised it to the to the to the nth what? degree. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, like it had its filler episodes. I've or seen I've seen a few of these, of these but the, it, every so often they do a really funny side episode. I think I've shown you. Yeah, some of their sort of mates that are ghost hunters and UFO hunters. And, yes, I, yeah. I have seen them, and those were good. And it's got a really strong cast. I think yeah. the two brothers are all perfectly Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles, mm-hmm. and women and men who are attracted to men will fight till the end of time at which one is the hotter dude. It's definitely Jensen Ackles. I See, there you go. I don't know. I reckon Jared Padalecki is pretty hot. You and your fucking long head louts that you <laughs> fuck. All right. <laughs> See, it's all over the place. Um, did you know I heard that those guys? Because fifteen seasons of a show means you're a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Uh, yeah, and number of seasons, 14 says here. So maybe that's, I, I incorrectly read there. 14, 307 episodes of that's this show. That's huge. That that's is st- huge. Because it's still one of these fucking old arcade things that does why? 20 to 22 episodes every year. But that's, what's weird about it is like, no shows have that kind, they have to, to keep going for 14 years, you still have to have the same audience. So which audience is watching this thing for 14 years? I got out when they defeated God was a bad guy. <laughs> I'm like, what else can you fucking do? Yeah. Like the devil's on their side, God's the bad guy, I'm out, I'm done. Not because I have any religious uh, issues with that, but it was like, God's well, gone away because he couldn't give a shit about you monkeys Yeah, anymore. so what's next after God? Yes. <laughs> Uh, and it's been not just one or two more years, it's been fucking seven more years. You know, those guys bought a jumbo jet, and it's just for them. Like nice. an actual jumbo jet, not, not a private jet. <laughs> uh, I, all for, uh, good on them, they I say great, yeah, absolutely. I Kill watched uh, J- uh, Jared Padalec- uh, uh, Padalecki in the Friday 13th remake again recently. Oh. And, you know, he's a, he's a big buff dude who, who, who occupies a frame with Jason Voorhees and holds his own, so... Okay. Well, you know, good for him. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, Supernatural. Oh, and I the guess dad, sh- of course, in it was um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yes. Right, so, yeah. So, that, that's kind of cool as well. He keeps repopping up, even though he's, he dies in the first episode yeah. type thing. So, yeah, that's it. Supernatural. Okay. 
I, I guess guilty I should have pleasure. expected that one would be on your list. Fair enough, fair enough. My number three is also a guilty pleasure, which is similarly something that I might say that you wouldn't. It's the show Suits. Ah, uh, yeah. A couple of people named this. I've never yeah. seen it. Okay, well, let me tell you about Suits. It's a show about a college dropout stoner dude named Mike, who happens to also be kind of a genius. In fact, he's so smart that he takes law students bar exams for them for money, even though he's not a lawyer. And he ends up running from the police or some situation uh, into an interview session for lawyers at New York's biggest law firm, which is run by Harvey Specter, which is Gabriel Mack. Mack from guy. Spirit. Yeah, who's the hottest, wickedest lawyer in New York. And long story short, Mike becomes a lawyer illegally because he never went to college, and Harvey Specter covers for him because he's really cool and he respects Mike's genius. And the reason, and the show goes from there. It's all set in New York. It's all very, you know, sooty, corporate, this, that, whatever. Obviously, I like that shit. It's got a, it's got a uh, what do you call it on it? A royal? A royal. Megan. It has now. Meghan Markle is a princess now. Yep. Um, I don't know if she's still shooting that thing or going. No, no, she's out. She's like, fuck you, I'm royalty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Grace, Grace Kelly, once she married Mo- Prince of Monaco, she was like, I'm not acting anymore. Uh, exactly. Well, why would you? I mean, um, the reason it's shit, though, is because even though it's well produced, well, quite well written, the jokes that land are good and the character development is relatively good, but it has them pulling a win out of thin air. Like, oh, they okay. just go, oh, well, Two you know. Two sex winner. Yeah, like, like sort of, exactly. Just, sex winner. At the end, it's like totally like um, fucking, you know, um, oh, well, we're just going to buy that debt from you. And then now we're in control. I'm like, dude, that doesn't happen within the uh, <laughs> one sentence. season, you know? <laughs> you, yeah, that takes forever. So that's the reason it's shit, but I still enjoy it very much. And they do say shit and asshole in this show, oh. which is a bit weird because they don't copy. I think I heard one fuck. I could have heard one Damn. fuck. Just one. Okay. But it's network. So here you go. All right, then. Well, my number two is a film which is still running. Film. <laughs> TV show which is still running. Uh-huh. It's had two seasons. The third season's just dropped onto Netflix. And I'm looking forward to watching it when this fucking movie challenge, watching challenge is over. <laughs> yeah. It's called Slasher. Slasher. Yeah. Slasher is a Canadian anthology horror series, which was initially meant to be a one season, which premiered on- What the on fuck do you even hear of these things? <laughs> this US network called Chiller okay. on March 4th, 2016. And it was eight, ten episodes. Can't remember. Uh, and basically created by a bloke named Aaron Martin. And it basically, it's a self-contained show. Like American Horror Story, it's all over and done with by the end of the first- Season, so you know who the killer is and the killer's been dealt with. Okay. Season two, Netflix then gets interested and they pick it up. And the second season dropped uh, end of 2017. Mm -hmm. And it was called Slasher Guilty Party. Yeah. And that's a different set of characters and a different mystery where they're getting picked off one by one until the ultimate killer is revealed. Okay. And now the third season's another one set in a party. Is it all different people? Yeah. Obviously, because they weren't died. Yeah. 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 Every season's a different group of characters. It's just united by there's a slasher killing people one by one. Is it the concept you like? Yeah, and it's good fun. Like it's trash TV. Okay. It's fine, I guess, how it's made, but it's it's exactly what it sounds like. No one's a really great actor. Oh okay. It's not really well shot. It's <laughs> yeah, just you like fun. it. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's it's a total guilty pleasure. And it was originally my number one before I remembered as we started recording today what my number one really should have been. So <laughs> as a uh, clinician can you tell me what you think it is people like about horror movies and what it is you think like is it is it that they enjoy the the jump scare is it the fright is it the dread is it the fact that killing people makes them feel more alive I don't know what is it Do you some know? people all of the above some people like to be scared yeah some people like to try and work out the mystery because it's a mystery it's like you know who's opting these people okay, and what's the rationale for that. that yeah yeah and some people just like seeing gory kills yeah. or a combination there of the above in my case yes okay all right well, you all have issues. So <laughs> <laughs> That's my two. What's your number two? My number two is the Big Bang Theory. Yes, that was what I was There thinking. it That's is. That's what I was referring to before. Okay. okay thank God it's on your list because at one stage we were going to create a whole segment around you just defending this fucking absolutely, show. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. By the way, anyone who doesn't know, and I can't imagine anyone does, because this is the most popular TV show in the world, or at least it was until it ended a little while ago. Uh, it's about these uh, two nerdy physicists and their friends who all have this really high IQs, and then they also love Star Wars and Star Trek and shit. Uh, and they live in, and they're all like professors in this like uni. And this hot woman, Penny, moves in next door, which is, you know, to everyone's delight except Sheldon, who doesn't understand social relationships and is borderline autistic. Now, I think. Um, <laughs> Paul put me onto this show, everyone. Oh. That's right. Okay, because I used to never watch it, right? And I used to think what everyone else thinks, which is this is shit and this is cheap humor and it's just one line and it's always playing on pop culture and this and that. I agree, by the way, with all of that, Okay. Then Paul says, yeah, I actually watch it, and I actually watch every episode. like you, Because I just watched it when I, I was on. I did for three or four years. Yes, and I'm like, really? So then I start to download, I mean, watch it, right? And, <laughs> 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 and 
I've seen every frame of this thing. <laughs> I've seen the whole thing. Whereas I saw the light and got out. Yeah, Wayne actually, has clung to the sinking. It or, way or perhaps more. it should be rising out of the ocean submarine. Well, given look, the popularity. Of this I've thing. enjoyed Bernadette uh, and stuff in it, and she's like the blonde one who who yeah. Uh, yeah. With Before the speaky you, voice. With the speaky voice, exactly. So even the later episodes to me not so bad. However, I do also again, once again, I find myself laughing my ass off. Yes, they're making pop culture references over and over and over. But guess what? I love that shit. Look what I'm doing. I'm doing a fucking movie TV podcast. Yeah, exactly. I so, stand resolute. Absolutely. So I, you know, I understand that. And by the way, before you pass judgment on this show, <laughs> look up Howard Wolowitz doing Nicolas Cage impersonations on YouTube. Okay, it'll then, change your entire opinion. Then of the just whole tell show. me that it's it's fucking class. All right, I'm telling you, that's some good moments right there. So you know, universally despised. I understand some people think it's cool to hate this. You know, you bunch of hipsters out there. I don't know, right? <laughs> but I maintain I love this show, and I'm quite happy for you to know about it. <laughs> All right, there you go. Well, let's do a recap then of our list before we reveal our number ones. Why not indeed? Kicking off with me then, obviously. My number 10, Ultimate Beastmaster. <laughs> number 9, Black Summer. Number 8, Heroes. Number 7, Survivor. Number 6, Kevin Hill. That well-known show which all of you have heard about. Number yeah. 5, The A-Team. Number 4, The Goodies. Number 3, Supernatural. Number 2, Slasher. And my number 1, Guilty <laughs> what is Pleasure it? TV show is undoubtedly and I'm really annoyed it took me uh, like till we literally sat down and my brain suddenly kicked into gear it's the pickup artist I never saw this show man you have to go back and find this show okay so hang on I've read the book by Neil Strauss called The Game which I believe this is based on yeah, so the guy who he tell, wrote tell that on, more. his name's Mystery, right? Yes, Mystery. Yeah, Mystery, or as he's really known, Eric Von Markovic. Okay, and what's yeah. the show about? The show is basically taking nine or whatever it is, ten contestants, who are self-proclaimed shithouse at picking up. So, guys. Yes, right? dudes. Who are ranging from incredibly awkward through to really, really ugly and fat and have no chance with women whatsoever. Got it. And Mystery is going to show them how to become He's the pickup artist. The ultimate pickup artist. And join his cadre <laughs> of literally three or four dudes who travel the world with him picking up women. It is awful. Oh god, dude. Okay, first the of all the concept is misogynistic. The concept is <laughs> sexist and mind blowingly bad. It is, it is. Yet I cannot deny oh, the awkwardness of watching these guys fight try uh, and that would fail kill me. That women. would kill me is compelling television. All right. Well, every- to say nothing of oh. how much I hate Mystery and his whole shtick. Absolutely. Now, anyone who... Do- like, I have read the book. The book is called The Game by Neil Strauss, okay? And he maintains there's actually an underground world of pickup artists who actually have techniques. They discuss methodology. They basically talk about the ways that you get women. And one of them is the negs thing. Or, you know, we won't, we won't go into it. It's all a long things, story, but, but like, yeah. he does teach them a technique or, or put them in a situation where they have to test something he's taught them, and the person who does the worst is out. Ah. So they get whistled down through the eight, nine seasons till we get to the ultimate pickup artist. That's just, and how does it end? Like, oh my well, it God. ends with him adding that dude to his, like I said, his cadre of wingmen. Really? Uh-huh. And, and the guy who wins, is it like, what's, what's, what, what, what is he I like? I honestly can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> like, does he become this? cool like at the end of the movie or no? It probably helps that it was around the time when I was single. <laughs> so Absolutely. I've only heard of this show, but I've um I'm interested now to know what yeah. this mystery looks like. Two thousand seven, two thousand eight. He looks exactly like the biggest douche you can possibly imagine. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Because uh, women like douches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, first season August, uh two thousand seven, second season two thousand eight. I probably watched it in two thousand yeah, probably two thousand eight I watched it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna happen. So did you pick up any particular tips from Mystery? No. Because that shit won't work. None that I've Let me tell you a story. I was once in a motherfucking like bar with Scott and three other women, all right? Some dude just fucking sidles next to me between me and Carol, right? Oh, that's right. You told this story. Yeah, yeah and yeah. he goes, well, and he just starts talking and he's talking to me. Now, that's one of the rules in this thing. If, yeah, you, yeah. if you go to a bunch of a group of women and guys, always talk to the men. Yep. Right? And I'm like, okay. And I'm actually saying, I'm about to say, who the fuck are you, right? And he goes, oh, I'll just join you if that's all right. And he fucking just sits down. And it makes the entire group table just go, what the fuck? Uncomfortable, is going on? yeah. And we ended up saying, um, dude, I think you're making us uncomfortable. I think you should leave. I said that shit to him. He goes, oh, I'll just leave you to it then. I'm like, yeah, that's what I just said. And he fucking gets up, stands for like three seconds, then leaves. <laughs> it was the most <laughs> embarrassing shit I've ever heard. But he was trying that shit on us. Yep. So anyway, it doesn't work, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Again, I'm not saying it works. I'm not <laughs> no. saying I picked up anything. I'm just saying it was compelling. No, no, it would be Garbage compelling. TV. It would be compelling as hell. 
and I think a worthy number one. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, here's my ten to one, everyone. My number ten is Saved by the Bell. That's right. Number nine, Yo Mama. What? Number eight, <laughs> Two and a Half Men. That's right again. Do you seven. Need some, do some help with the backing. Yeah. I'll, why don't you, I'm on you help me out? Okay. 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 Yep. Number seven, Burn Notice. Hey. Really? That's what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm good on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Six was Glee. I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> Five is Dawson's Crack. Number four. <laughs> four is How I Met Your Mama. <laughs> uh, legend. Wait for it. Dairy. I'm still waiting for it. Keep oh, I going. see. Okay, go for it. Oh, I see what's going to happen here. Number three is Suits. <laughs> oh, you gonna, I thought you were going to say Dairy in the middle. <laughs> okay, there it is. <laughs> Oh, this shit was well oiled, let me tell you. Uh, my number two is The Big Bang Theory, and one is, of course, Sex in the City. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. Okay, people. I've spoken about this in the past, oh, and I think one geez, of, one of the really? listeners called us out, called me out on this, said this is definitely in this top three. Absolutely. I once spent a New Year's Day with my ex watching not one season, but every season of Sex in the City all day. This show... What kind of hell... Had you, what had you dude, done wrong to deserve I'm such I'm telling punishment? you, I wanted it. This show is the easiest show to watch. Was she tonguing your balls at the same time? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was New Year's Day, Paul. Everything was done, my friend. You can't do shit New Year's Day. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, I maintain that this show, which is about... The reason it's bad is it's just about four whining whores. Right? <laughs> and that's... <laughs> They're just fucking pissing and moaning about everything, all right? And the reason it's good, the reason it's good though, is that I was told by my sister that the things that happen in this show are hyper realism or like fantastic versions of things that women actually deal with, except they make it like big and huge because it's a TV show. Now, I, I just reminded right. <laughs> Wait, so this is about four whitey horses. Look, I, I honestly watch the show and I dare anyone to give me a, a, a more accurate description. <laughs> okay. By the way. Oh my God. Oh yeah, absolutely. And this, uh, look, the show is great to have on while you're doing something else. In fact, people, here's the best application of this show. Get a dual monitor set up on your computer. On the right monitor, put Sex in the City, let it run. Okay. On the left side, play like Shadow of War or something. That is the best possible application for the show, and it's perfect because you can check in and check out whenever you want. You don't need to be completely present. I think anyone watching a movie challenge might fucking can agree with that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's may have watched the film whilst also <laughs> loading up screens and beating off exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it was nineties, you know, and it's very like Not that old. Uh, yeah, it's it ran from fucking when is it? Uh, yeah, ninety eight. Till 2004. Okay. So, you know, and don't get me wrong, I haven't seen the movies or anything. Actually, I saw the second one that was okay. Uh, <laughs> please. <laughs> it was all shit. It was all shit. And I know it's shit, but I love it. And I'm uh, happy to tell you that. So, now, my number one, which you had a little aside, my, your number one, I have a little aside. I once dated a woman who said to me, which one of the Sex and City girls am I? Oh, what did you say? Wait a minute. Let me, uh, yeah, which one did you say? You have to say, you can only say Charlotte or Miranda. No, you can't say Miranda. You got to say Charlotte. Well, yeah, because apparently she said, I gauge whether or not I'm going to have a second date with a guy on how he responds to this. And what did you say? <laughs> I can't remember what I said, but I said, fuck, I hope it's Samantha. <laughs> I thought that. Did you say it? No, I said. Because you can kill with that lane. No, I said, obvious, I, I said, well, clearly I'm thinking you are more whichever. The Chris, Carrie. What, what's Kristen Davis? Yeah, character? she's Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one, you know. But... Uh, <laughs> I'd take Samantha. Oh, <laughs> see, because you still stabbed at it. Now, did you get a second date? Yeah. Yeah, motherfucker. Someone knows how to Beep. chew. That's right. That's how it is. Pick up artist at work. Who's the fucking man? <laughs> no, <All right>. <laughs> so you are mystery. All right. Uh, no, that's good. But uh, I, I, I really do feel about this show like this, okay? It's the shit. I will happily own a box set. Well, if you're I right with one of those play. words. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's fine for watching. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. All right, well, look, there is our list as fully revealed. Who got it right? Who got it wrong? Who's closest to what you believe is guilty pleasure television? Did you have any uh, honorable mentions? No, I had none. Okay, let a- me just... Apart from now, Battle of the Planets. Oh, let me just kick mine out, right? Yeah, just run through it quickly. We are running a bit long. Castle, Bones, Dating Naked, Sledgehammer. Whoa, Beverly... whoa, whoa. <laughs> Rewind. Yeah. Dating Naked. You haven't seen Dating Naked? No. Oh, dude. It's basically people turn up on this island and they turn up naked and they, oh, we're going on a date together. And the camera crew Carl follows them around. Now, they do blur out the dick in the fur burger and the tay tays. But. What's the point? 
Uh, because they go on flying foxes where this woman, she met him three minutes ago. She looks directly at his dick. Like, there's this women just look, go, they just have a good old look, right? And then they go on a flying fox where she has to sit on his dick. That's got to be a, like, that, it's, it's compelling. I'm telling you, it's compelling. <laughs> <laughs> CSI Miami, The Mentalist, and Herman's Head. <laughs> Herman's Head. I really like that show. <laughs> I'm surprised Max Headroom didn't get a look in. Oh, God, that's a piece of shit. <laughs> All right, that's our list. Thank you very much, Wayne. Let's hear then from the listeners in the segment we call the Pop 10. Talk about Pop 10. Talk about Pop 10. Kicking off this week's list with Joey DiCarlo from the So Wizard podcast where I was on a couple of weeks back. Do check out that episode. Number three, any anime. (laughs) What? Number two, 90 Day Fiance. Not the first or last time that gets mentioned. In fact... It is the first one. I am last. unfamiliar. Ne- obviously never made it here to Australia. But I'm yeah. surprised that one of the networks he hasn't picked that concept up. I know up. some girls who could fucking talk about that. And number one, Dance Mums. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen it before. Okay. Sally Vaughan, top level patron to the show. Hey, Sally. How you doing? Sally. Controversial, this list. Seinfeld, MASH, and Game whoa, of Thrones. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> None of those are guilty pleasures. Oh, my God. Seinfeld is a great show. That's a bingo. In other words, I agree with Wayne. Sally. I only called you out for got, but I think all those shows are well regarded. Yeah, we love you, but go on. <laughs> all right, Stephen Burns said, just to report, not sure if it counts as a guilty pleasure, but Supernatural. Maybe people don't know about the show, but the fandom are fanatics. Yeah. 15, he said 15 seasons has to count for something. And this is one that almost maybe could have made my list. And I think you watched it as well. Mm-hmm. The League. The League is a good show. I actually don't think it's a guilty pleasure. It's no, cheaply I can, made. I can see it's a guilty pleasure. Okay. A bunch of friends hanging shit on each other. Loosely formed around a premise that is basically forgotten about after a season two. That is fantasy football. Yeah. And fantasy NFL. That's why I thought you'd love it. Sounds like most of my favorite podcasts, he said. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, Luke Alexander just had Entourage. Uh, I think I think Entourage is a good show. Yeah, I don't think it's guilty The movie pleasure. was not. No, the movie's garbage. But the, but the show itself, well, well handled. Mm, even I, though it's about I some agree. very hedonistic shit. Mark Harris, also the Facebook listener community, link in the show notes, said The Ranch... The Flash and Burn Notice is his number one. Burn Notice, son. There break you yourself. Blake Jarvis, good friend of the show. Three, Cobra Kai. Never watched it. I saw I the first. Yeah, watched, we, we, we reviewed the first two episodes. So I haven't seen any more than that. Oh, I saw the whole thing. In season two? No, no. Uh, no. Okay. Number two, Norseman. No, I've heard of this show, but no. And number one, Survivor. Good on you, Blake. There you go. Tim Cormack over on Twitter had Round the Twist. I remember that. Yeah. Farscape, which got mentioned quite a few A times. lot of folks like the Muppets. Yes. And Married with Children, which I warred with. Uh, we and used I decided to dig- it was yeah. too good to put on the list. We used to dig the shit out of that back in the day. But you watch it now. It's probably a bit like the A-Team. Oh, it'll be exactly like the mm. A-Team. Yeah. Okay. Stephen from Super Retro Throwback. Number three, CSI. Number two, Rocco's Modern Life. Number one, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> you guys like that, not me. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike and Oscar podcast. Frasier. I'm white and I grew up in the 90s. No, 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 no. Frasier's oh, excellent. Oh, Mike. Come on now, Mike. Sorry, also, Mike, you're in a bit of trouble here. I know it's a show about white privilege, but still good. Diners, drive-ins, and dives. I'm fat and grew up with Italians, he wrote. <laughs> okay, not heard of that one. And X-Men, like recently. I'm 35. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kids. Oh, all right. T- kid, sorry. Yes. Billy, aforementioned from We Watch The Thing. Patron, good friend. So do check out We Watch The Thing. Great show. Three screen queens, the best reality show of all time. Ten actresses <laughs> compete for a role in a Saw movie. So trash, but so good. I would watch that show. I'm, I'm surprised it's not on your fucking recent list. Number two, Dawson's Crack. Pacey yeah. is king. Pacey Dawson's is king. Creek. Sorry, sorry. And number one, Just Shoot Me. It's like Friends, POV cousin. I think it's a good show. But it I'm... always brings me joy. Oh, it's a great, f- it's a really good show. Hmm. Good Times, Great Movies had uh, Antique Roadshow. And I'm under 65 years of age. No, uh, that, that one's not bad. <laughs> I actually don't mind that one either. A face mainly your mother could love. Sailor Moon, curious, thought it'd be like Roman Warriors with titties. Also, thought they were college chicks. Is that the cartoon? Yep. Number wow. two, Power Rangers, don't judge me. Number three, Tokyo, Wankai. Please don't look that up. Wow, I feel better <laughs> about myself. <laughs> <laughs> I feel great now. Thanks, bruh. <laughs> Girlfriend from Go Watch a Movie Podcast. Number three, Fixer Upper. Number two, Orange is the New Black. And number one, The Golden Girls, Fight Me, he put in brackets. Dude, Golden Girls is great. It's a yeah. great fucking show. I did say I don't think the Golden Girls really qualify no, as a guilty no, no, pleasure. No. Duty from Shaking Not Nerd. Number three, One Tree Hill. Though he said he stopped after <laughs> season five or six. That's definitely guilty pleasure. That is pleasure. totally a thing. Number two, Housewives of Beverly Hills. And number one, Married at First Sight. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the last Married at First Sight, not the recent one, the last Australian one was actually really good. Hmm. Okay. You watched it. Only because the all these, these people I go to dinner with watch it. And I, if I didn't watch it, I had nothing to talk to them about. So I, I ate all the recaps. <laughs> Can't handle the truth. <laughs> Jeez. 
Uh, get your following week from the Retro Cinema Podcast. Do check them out. Wonderful show doing films of the 80s. Botched. Dr. Pimple I've, Popper. Uh, Obviously about these Yeah, fucked up plastic surgery. surgery and shit. And Diana's dive in and dies and she added Married at First Sight and Ice Road Truckers. That is reality TV. Yeah. Like the, wow, Quintet, man. Julio from the Contrarians Podcast said, I'm a sucker for Gordon Ramsay shows, but Hell's Kitchen's the only one I'd say I'm a little ashamed to watch. Okay. Kev, from previously from the Something Something Podcast, now has their own radio show in the UK. Love Island. It's trash, but it's addictive. I actually did sort of see that, a bit of that, <laughs> and I agree. Chef Ben Randall from the In The Weeds Podcast, another good friend to the show. The Deep, a Canadian-Australian co-production kids show about a family that explores the ocean in an improbable submarine animated. If I have to watch one of my kids shows, I hope it's this one. Wow. Number two, The Flash. CW's DC flagship. A lot of people like that one. Number one, The Great British Baking Show, which makes F because Chef Ben. Mm. So much kinder and grosser than any American cooking competition show. Also, their accents are silly and charming. <laughs> <laughs> nice ben. one. Jeez, Ben. Uh, all right. Nicole Presley. Number one, MTV's The Challenge. Yep, the best. Number two, Sister Wives. Don't we all secretly have a deep down desire to do something like this? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? I don't know. Never seen Sister what Wives. That? Yeah. Mm. And number three, any of those story shows like all of them. Stories shows? Storage. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Deep cuts. Deep cuts, Nick. Nick Spinarski, welcome back to the group. Been a long time since we've heard from you, Nick. Uh, number three, Glee. There you are. Yes. Number two, Dawson's Creek. And Word. number one, Big Brother. Shit. I get it, though. Ashley Gorski, who's a good friend. We love Ashley. Ashley. These aren't guilty pleasures because I'm not ashamed of them, but the real housewives of Atlanta, New York, New Jersey, and every <laughs> other city. <laughs> Nice one. Second to last one from Chris from the Faces and Aces podcast known as The Green Korean on Twitter. A bizarre Canadian reality show called The Skinny Dip. Mm -hmm. Host Eve Kelly shows up in a town and tries to convince people to hike with her to a remote location in the wilderness to skinny dip with her. No. It's strange, quirky, and hilarious. And I'll let Wayne have a look at the picture to see whether he wants to watch this show. I'm torn. <laughs> I'm um, Natalie Imbruglia. I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's not a lock for Wayne. Yeah. Thank you for that, Chris. And lastly, from the man who created this list today or suggested it, Jordy Davidson. Mm -hmm. Number three, Farscape. The writing can be bad, the acting can be bad, but man, this show can be fun. Wow. Number two, Babylon 5, another spiritual child of Star Trek that is more fun than good, and I'm there for it. And number one, Leverage. If they made Ocean's Eleven into a TV show, this is what it would look like. Whoa, what was that? Leverage. Leverage. Yep. I'm looking it up then. I really enjoy the character development over the show, and I rewatched the whole thing pretty regularly. And he said, honorable mention to all the police procedurals, especially the British ones, I have a problem. Fair enough. Nice one, son. Thank you very much. Thank you, Geordie. Thank you, everybody. We got inundated. We couldn't keep up with all the responses this week. We really, so truly, it sounds like we tried. <laughs> really truly do appreciate it. Ah, it's important, I think, yeah. to, to shout yeah. out those ones. And we, we move through them pretty quickly. That is it for episode 223 of the Countdown Movie and TV Reviews Podcast. You can submit your list, How Wayne. Just Google the Countdown Movie and TV Reviews podcast and you'll find us or give us an email at thecountdownpodcast at gmail.com. We're on Twitter at the Countdown PC. You can check us out in the Facebook listening community where we are most active. Link is in the show notes. We host our show through Podbean. And indeed, check us out on the website for our network, CC Radio, which is basically ccradio.com.au. Check out the other great shows on the network, including Troy and Cade's Comic Confidential. All right. All right. That is it for this week, as I said, Wayne. What's happening next week? Rep 224. We are doing the top 10 future set films. That's right. With some guests. Guests now. Jason and Pat from the Binge Movies podcast are joining us. I've had the pleasure of joining Jason a couple of times uh, to review films. In fact, Jason and Pat the first time around. Mm -hmm. So going to reciprocate, have them on the show. And it was their suggestion for a topic which uh, we're quite keen on. So it be a little bit, some, some familiar stuff, some different ones, I reckon. I think. For future set films. Very nice. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Check out Binge Movies in the meantime. All right, that's it. Thank you very much, folks. That was the shizzle. All uh, right, it has indeed been I hope you don't feel so, you know, like, I hope, I hope you still like us, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I hope you still like us. Because I would understand if you didn't. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they might not respect us, but then I don't think that was ever an no, issue. No, no, that was never happening. That's yeah, <laughs> fine. I don't need that. All right. <laughs> My name is Paul. My name is Wayne. And this has been the Soundboard. And you listeners are... <laughs> sure. Didn't sure. use it today. Sure. Didn't Why get not? it in Why there. Not? Why not? <laughs> Catch you next week. See you, kids. I don't want to wait for our lives to be over. I want to know right now, what will it be? I don't want to wait for our lives to be over. Will it be? Yes, so will it be?
Oh, I think I heard that one. Welcome to the countdown. This is episode two hundred and twenty-three, and the countdown. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Sister Scott. Can I? Is there any chance I could just keep all this? <laughs> I might put it as a blooper. Ah, uh, tits. <laughs>